How's it going? Hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. How's it going? No worries. So one thing that your campaign has right now yes. is a lot of confidence. Yes, because he's been tough for his whole life. And it's not a soundbite tough. You know, he's saying what he wants. And, you know, some people are going to be offended. But there comes a time where you actually have to say something real. Folks, uh, we welcome in uh, the man in that video, not Donald Trump's son, uh, but Mark McKinnon, former media advisor for President George W. Bush and Senator John McCain, and executive producer, co-host of The Circus. And you saw that uh, clip was from The Circus, Inside the Greatest Political Show on Earth. And this Sunday on Showtime, it's episode 9 of The Circus, at 8 p.m. Eastern, and it will uh, focus on the wins last night um, and uh, what will be happening in Florida and tomorrow night's GOP debate and whether Rubio and Kasich and Sanders have more, you know, fight to give or will be starting to bow out. So let's talk to Mark. Hello, sir. Hey, how are you? I'm down in Miami, kicking it hard here. Yeah, well, Miami, that would be in the state of Florida. And the state of Florida would be uh, one of the things you'll be talking about on your next episode. And we've been talking about it uh, here. And uh, we will continue all week and into next week. So what do you see happening in Florida? And the key question, you think Rubio will be on the ballot? Well, we're in the death zone now. You know, that's a place for mountain climbers where you, where you get the oxygen deprivation <laughs> in any. It chokes you off, right? And so Rubio and, you know, Rubio particularly is kind of you know, trying to get some more oxygen, and it's, uh, it's a tough situation for him. He's had a tough night last night, a lot of pressure on him. But I'll tell you one thing. There's all this chatter about him pulling out before the vote. If that happens, I'll be surprised, and here's why. I just he, he one of the thing that I learned being around Rubio, and this is what we catch on the circus. He is a super competitive guy, and and I mean that in the in the in the best sense. He's just, you know, he always defied expectations. He ran for speaker when nobody thought he should. He ran for the Senate when nobody thought he should. He's running for president when nobody thought he should. So the notion of kind of pulling up stakes and admitting and admitting defeat before the before voting is just it's contrary to his DNA. And also, by the way. I just know this is somebody who's worked in campaigns and been like the senior advisor in a campaign. Nobody wants to be the guy that goes to him with that conversation, right? Because, I mean, it's just, you know, it's all about loyalty and believing and, you know, saying we're going to get there. And so the notion that somebody's going to walk to him and say, ah, you know what, all this was kind of worth it. No, no, true, plug. true. That's but after a zero delegate uh, performance uh, yesterday, it becomes a little easier for someone to do that if, if it hasn't been done already, because there were reports a couple of days ago that some have already uh, broached that. Let me ask you this, since you're in Florida. Reports that Jeb is now going to meet uh, over the next couple of days with all three of the uh, candidates, or shall I call them the others, except for Donald Trump. What the heck's that about? Yeah. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, this is a really good role for Jeb to play as kind of the elder statesman here, trying to talk some common sense into the candidates who are on the field still uh, running against Trump. And, you know, he's the kind of person I think all those guys respect. He's the kind of guy that could have that kind of a conversation with Marco, could have it with Kasich, could have, you know, with with Cruz. So uh, he's the sort of guy that, you know, could be a referee in this situation. You know, and you think about kind of the perfect guy, he's it. Well, what, what would he be saying? Because as we discussed with Tom DeLay, um, uh, earlier here, um, you know, Rush Limbaugh today, not calling for this and not saying he's favoring this or he's supporting Cruz, but just saying if they're going to stop Trump, then the establishment candidate has to now become, and that means to get the support of the establishment, uh, Ted Cruz. Is that going to be yeah. Jeb Bush's message? Hard to imagine, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the guy his brother publicly talked about how much he disliked him. Uh, and, you know, he's, he's just, you know, he's so anti-establishment, uh, given his record in the Senate and what have you. So it's hard to imagine that, although, you know, it's it's sort of a Sophie's choice now. It's, you know, and it's if it's not Trump, that's the most likely scenario. Let me let me ask you about the other side, uh, Hillary. I mean, it, you know, it, Hillary loses Michigan and she wins yeah. more delegates than Sanders. That can, yeah. go, you go back to Iowa with the coin flip. She won six straight coin flips to win Iowa. <laughs> I mean, it, if the fix isn't in, and if this isn't typical backroom politic garbage, um, then what is? Yeah, no, it's classic. The problem for her and for the Democrats is that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's turning into a sort of Batan death march. You know, she's probably going to get there, but, boy, it's, just, it's, it's drawn it out, and it's showing that she is not 
uh, as strong as everybody thought she was, is showing a lot of weakness, a lot of vulnerability. And the irony of this whole campaign is that, you know, the Democrats may put up the only person that the Republicans can beat. The Republicans may put up the only person the Democrats can beat. Very quickly, let me ask you, Mark, very quickly. Dearborn, Michigan, I mentioned this earlier, largest Arab-American enclave in the USA. 41% of the voters were from Dearborn. And Dearborn went for the Jewish candidate on the Democrat side and the Republican candidate who wants to, uh, quote-unquote, ban <laughs> Muslims from coming into the country. How'd that happen? Uh, it's a circus out there, right? That's Somebody should do a weekly documentary. That, I mean, that's, that, <laughs> a good that, idea. That, that, may be, that may be the best bizarre summary of this whole election. I, I, mean, that I, just I, says it right there. I smell an episode <laughs> 13 coming up with that, that topic, <laughs> very topic. Hey, Mark. I'm going to give you a credit. Great talk. Thank you. Great talking to you. We'll watch you on Showtime, uh, 8 p.m. on Sunday, uh, the uh, circus. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming back, taking your calls, 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629.